So here I have a Raspberry Pi that I've had running in my house for well, probably about six months now, and I had it hooked up to one of these. This is a radio transmitter. Uh, you can get these transmitters with a receiver uh, together for about three or four dollars, and they come in uh, in different megahertz. Uh, 315, 333, and 433 megahertz, which are the most common for little devices around your house. Now, a uh, little seven, eight months ago, I did a video on a smart wall plug that I had that ran Linux that I got a root shell on, which on average is about $20, which is great. I could connect in through Wi-Fi and turn uh, lights on and off that were hooked up to that plug, but it was still $20. Now, then I found these Zap plug outlets now these are radio controlled, they're not Wi-Fi controlled, but you can get five of these with two remotes for about $20, $25 on Amazon. So a quarter of the price of those smart plugs, but you can't control this directly through Wi-Fi. So I found a tutorial online that allowed me to hook up uh, these little transmitter and receivers to a Raspberry Pi. I could record presses from these buttons and save them and then later on repeat them back so I would set up a web server on my Raspberry Pi here and be able to control these outlets. But now I have the Raspberry Pi. So these outlets are about five bucks a piece. Raspberry Pi adds, you know, fifty, sixty dollars uh, onto that price after you include shipping and the SD card. And I was using up a port on my uh, uh, switch here in my room, my Ethernet switch. So uh, I knew there had to be a better option. So now that I've been playing with the ESP8266 module, uh, which there's one right here, which I've been talking a lot about a lot in my videos, and this one here has, is a full development board for it. Uh, so it has the USB port uh, for programming it and serial communications and powering it. Uh, and you can get these for about $4 on eBay, if you don't mind waiting for shipping. $8 if you buy them off Amazon and get it in two days. And I found code that allowed me to uh, record presses, just as I did on the Raspberry Pi. Here's the same little module, but with a little wire I connect to it as an antenna. And that's what's been hooked up to the Raspberry Pi for a while. But now I can run a web server on this, and that brings the cost down from, like I said, about $60 uh, to about $8, because you figure this is 3 or $4, and getting a transmitter and a receiver uh, are is about another three or four dollars. So under ten dollars, now I can control as many of these plugs as I can buy. All I have to do is record the presses from the remote control and then repeat them back. And I've set up my code so that, you know, again, doing it through a web interface, so I can do it from any device that has a web browser. And instead of hard coding the codes in here, I pass the variables. So if I buy more of these plugs, I don't have to go and get this plug, hook it up to my, or this uh, module, hook it up to my computer and reprogram it. I just update my web interface uh, to send different codes for different plugs. Uh, so bringing, making this project even more affordable. So uh, yeah, doing a lot with these ESP chips. So as you can see, I've been doing a lot of projects with these ESP chips in the past. The Raspberry Pis I thought were great. Uh, you know, having a full link server that size and that price, but still for little projects like this, it isn't worth dedicating a, uh, a Raspberry Pi to that for as far as price goes. And yeah, I can have the Raspberry Pi doing other things, but depending on where I need it, it, you know, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Where with these little ESP chips, three, four bucks, I can throw a bunch of them around and they can do multiple things so they can control more than my lights. I can have one controlling my lights and it can also be controlling my garage door or checking my doorbell. You know, things that we've worked on here. Uh, and again, I love Arduinos, but in the past, Arduinos were kind of limited to me because they were great, but without being connected to a computer, I felt like, you know, as, as far as remote controlling stuff, it wasn't very useful. But now with the ESP, again, being so cheap and connected to the internet, now I can control them from anywhere, from any device, and make them do a bunch of great things. So uh, I hope you're excited about these. I hope you're liking these tutorials I've been doing, these videos I've been doing. And this was just talking about this. Again, in the coming weeks, we're going to go over this project in detail. I'm going to show you how to hook this all up to an Arduino, to an ESP chip, how to record this, uh, the presses from a key, how to resend them, how to troubleshoot it. We're gonna get into a little, little bit with um, uh, SDLR, um, you know, 
so to, for troubleshooting and stuff. So if you're enjoying this and you're interested in this topic, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you've been watching my videos and you like a lot of my videos, both on this channel or my first channel, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. I appreciate all the support from there. Uh, other than that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, comment below. Let me know what you think. Hope you're enjoying these videos. Be sure to check out filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. That link's in the description along with all the other links I'm talking about. And um, there you can search through the videos from, from both my channels. And as always, I, I hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thank you.